What's good everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. What we're looking at right now is the Oxy One sequencer. It is by far my favorite piece of hardware I think that I've ever purchased. It, it just has so many amazing things about it and is so flexible and is so diverse that I really rely on this in a lot of ways that pick up my weaknesses for what I have in production, which honestly is a lot of music theory and a lot of coming up with um, hooks. Uh, sound design tends to be my strong suit, also creating drums and creating drum grooves. But when it comes into actually laying down ideas for a track, this is why I love this thing. There are so many features that are baked within this that I'm really not even going to bother trying to get into all of it because, I mean, it's just due to so much. But what I will talk about are my favorite things about it and talk about um, how they've just continuously updated this and, you know, exceeded my expectations. So my favorite thing about this as a whole is that, um, you know, even when you plug in notes and stuff, you can move everything off grid. There's a really cool sequencer, I think called like Octacron or something like that on iOS. And one of my number one requests for that was, yo, is there any kind of like offsetting? And I'm not talking about swing. It's not quite the same thing. There is swing on here, which you can add if you go to shift and turn this knob. But that's different than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having the ability to hold shift and then actually offset this, as you'll see here, or even move it early to where I can actually create notes and stuff that are going to move off grid. So if I were to do that on all of these, hit shift, hit shift, hit shift, we should now have some silly swung beat. Maybe we can actually go in and change the crazy amount of numbers of... Uh, scales that we have on this that are all really interesting and worthwhile in order to be able to um, kind of set this and let it go. So okay, that one's a little bit too far forward. That's really cool. Now what's really sick about this is that um, we can always plug in our values kind of like so. But what we can also do is we can set up something to harmonize our first sequencer if we go into this mode called Harmon, Harmonize Sequence 3 VO2. So because of this, uh, we can actually utilize, I think that this might have to be through these other things here because it's not working on that, but um, because of this, we can actually have all of these work with each other and actually harmonize all of the sequencers into a, sequ uh, into a separate one. We can send each sequencer into different MIDI channels. We can actually have up to a 32 track sequencer if we use the multi mode in here, which I've never really like had to do, but it's definitely within this. Um, it's where we just set this to multi-track and now each one of these, you know, say you've got eight, they can all be different. And that's just freaking crazy. The other thing is that there's some other like interesting modes on here that I don't use a whole lot. I will cover it in a future video, but we have stochastic and matricial modes, which is kind of like just a very different way of working and sequencing as a whole. As you can see, like these are all based off of uh, up to 16 steps and then behind this you have something that triggers data, something that triggers a note, something that triggers uh, intervals, something that triggers pulses, um, and then it will kind of cycle over as you can see here, velocity, octave, gate, probability, uh, retrigger, and then glide. So between all of this what you do is you kind of set a mode on this and then you kind of select which notes you want to plug in and then you go okay now I'm going to pick my notes now I'm going to pick this category now I'm going to pick this category and it's really fun. Um, I think that it's a little bit limited because for one you can't use the random mode on here so if I were to plug in a value within let's say the trigger and I hold this and then I go like that oh you can uh, before it wasn't working but yeah so you can randomly plug stuff in if you wanted to. I don't think that you can actually um, have this plug in notes though, but you can set like different retrigger values and different octave values to where this can jump up. But in any other mode, I believe what you can do instead is we can move this to say poly and I can set this to that same thing, which is Phrygian dominant in D sharp. go sorry C sharp and now what I can do is go and hit shift and hit random and now I can just kind of type this in here and plug in different notes on this 
it's not always a banger. It's not always great. But what is really cool is that sometimes you'll hear something that will get you close and then you can just start taking notes away and plug in via uh, process of elimination. So I don't know if that's going to sound cool or not, but let's just go ahead and take a listen and see what that does. That's actually kind of cool. Now, maybe I really like this, but I want this to not be as fast. Like well, I can set a division on here if I wanted to. So now this should play at half the speed. I also raise the octave. Now, what if I wanted to like time stretch this? Well, I could do that too. I could hold shift, uh, hit that twice, and then I can grab that third sequencer here and actually make this uh, either faster or a little bit later, um, either one. So check this out. I can go like this and then hit OK oh, and then just hit mute again. Now this is going to play a little bit slower. So. Now behind this, what I just did here is I've actually reset this to re-trigger so that way the sloppiness uh, doesn't kind of like continuously go off time. But with this, it's really sick and a really fast way to get some cool stuff. The other thing is that this actually has LFOs built into it. So it has two. Um, it also has smooth random, which is something that I ask for in almost every other kind of thing and that they that I almost never get. But if you go to the noise or you go to some of this other stuff that they have available, um, you'll see that they've got all different kinds of options with these wavetables. Then what you can do is you can set this to any of these destinations over here, which I don't think that you can even read. But one thing that I really like to send this to is what I'm going to get into in just a second. And that is the division mod. So the division mod on here um, or just the division in general allows us to change the playback direction of and also the time division of how the sequencer timeline playhead works. So right now it's going this way, but we can also set it to this way, which is random. We can also set it to opposite direction. We can also set it to back and forth. And then on top of that, we have these divisions here that we can change to make it go faster or slower. But then we have this percentage here that will start to rage that will kind of move at these different rates. And so the reason why this is significant is because if I have a patch like I normally do with phase plan or something, which I'll kind of just peep you in on this real quick, say something like this, which uh, I'll get into. This is Requiem 2. I have these for sale on my website if anybody's interested. But um, we can just pull up one of these, say like laser punk, and we can actually start using all of these macros and stuff in which to create a modular jam out of. So check this out. I'm gonna hit play and then turn on the filter. So I'll turn on the, uh, maybe the ambience, but check this out.
And so you can see that by using this sequencer and by having these different notes that are playing, they're still the same collection of notes, but they're playing at different times. They're playing in different orders and they're jumping around. They're uh, constantly feeding me something new to where I can combine my semi-modular approach to synthesis and basically record everything out within our really handy tool, which would be our rolling sampler, as you know that I rave about all the time. And so by starting with things inside of this sequencer, you can see that uh, it's just a basis of which to build ideas off of. It's not really like I'm going to carry this through a whole track, but it's a place that I can start to mess with pitch in a modular way and change in between all these different things, you know, um, and move in between. It only says that there's four banks, but again, there can be up to 32 different independent sequences that are going at once. And that's just freaking crazy. The other thing too, is that it does have some standard features that you would want to expect. So for example, if you have a multiple sequencer kind of like so, and this is already on multi, but let's say we wanted to keep that as our multi-track here. Let's say for this individual step, I wanted to set the time division um, into something a little bit different. So I can change the end of this by holding the end like this and setting the amount of steps. I think I have to hold that. Maybe it's this one. There we go. So I can set six steps on this one and then I can set up to, you know, however many steps on this one and maybe have that start in the middle. Maybe on this one, I can change this to be a little bit different. And whenever I push play, I'm gonna mute these other guys real quick. But whenever I push play, you'll see that the playhead of these are going to kind of jump around. So what this also means is that we can create some insane polyrhythms, but then we can actually get a little bit deeper, like I had talked about from before, and go into these different time divisions, right? Because I can set this one to go in reverse if I want to. So if I type on this and move this one in a different direction, now wherever this one goes, it should be going in reverse at times. If I set this one here, and I set the division on this one, you'll see that I can change that as well. So we go into the division on the T-Select 3. And I actually don't even have to click on these. I can actually just use the track on here in which to select which one I want to do. But we can actually have this jump all over the place. Which is just so crazy. But look at that. You know, the sequencer itself is just dancing around. You can have as, you know, uh, I think up to a certain amount of steps or whatever, but more than enough to get you going with some crazy idea. Isn't this just incredible though? Like, I love this thing, man. It's so cool. <clears throat> I hadn't really talked about the chords and stuff, but you absolutely have different chords. You also have a keyboard option if you want to use that. You've also got a song pattern arranger which is really nice because if you are somebody that likes to do different sequencing and you want to trigger these different things you've got up to 15 projects and then you've got up to 16 patterns per project so if you have these different things that are saved and you you have to save the pattern in order for you to be able to load this stuff up so keep that in mind um, but what's really cool is that once you kind of have all these out you can kind of just trigger them in the way that you uh, normally would you'll see that these four are indicative of these banks here um, I do think that you can actually open this up if you're using more multi-tracks and stuff. Um, maybe somebody, maybe the dev or something can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, you can pretty much create, you know, fully notated sequences with just a sine wave or something in here. And then just pull this up, save it, and then pull up the project and get ready to, to go. And it's really cool to actually just get some sound, or not even sounds, but just get some notes in here and play with this outside of even having it connected to anything. Um, and then just load it up and then see what it does and then kind of like make changes to it from then. Uh, this doesn't even really like, I, I guess I did cover quite a good chunk about what this can do, but there's so much more, man. This thing just like is, is everything that I need for plugging in MIDI data. And I think that uh, for someone like me that has this resampling approach for music production and uh, this modular thing of wanting to experiment, a sequencer is so handy. If you're somebody that doesn't struggle with making melodies or you're somebody that's, you know, already has like a, what is it, like a Torso 1 or, you know, some of the other stuff that's available, it might not be for you. Poly and Play even, um, I think that this, as far as MIDI is concerned, really exceeds the Poly and Play's capabilities by quite a bit. Um, 
I don't really want to do a comparison right now, but the poly in play is more of a groove box and has a lot of great random options for the sounds that you load into it. But as a means of having it trigger MIDI data, just with the, um, whether it be through probability, uh, I guess both of those have, but the different ways that you can kind of flip this and kind of change different things about this and have it talk to the other sequencers. So for example, kind of like what I had talked about before, if I set this scale to this, um, <clears throat> over this way and we go into this here and we change this maybe to multi so we go poly and then we change this into Harmon sequence 2 uh, then what this can do essentially is harmonize with this sequencer here or it can harmonize with sequencer 1 as well and so because this can harmonize with each other, if we have these different values that are plugged in, then what this will do is it will actually play certain notes that are in harmony with this other scale. So if I were to, um, we got this one going, I think we're gonna, we're gonna mute this one. We're gonna unmute this one, see if that one's going or not. I'm not even sure to be honest. But now that we have this, <laughs> set that to a scale. Maybe we can use Japan or something. We can set that to be at half. But now what this is doing is it's basically creating these harmonies in between the two, and I don't think that what we're doing sounds relatively exciting because I just plugged in some random notes, but how sick is that to be able to just be like, alright, well, you know, if I've got chords or something, for example, so maybe let's say I change this one into something a little bit different, like a chord mode, and let's just kind of plug something within this, then what this will do is it will play notes based off of what's in the chord. So if I set this here to, that's in major, I don't like major, we don't do happy notes here, harmonic, minor, and F2, you're going to see that this is just going to follow this now, but check this out. ahead and create a new sound. I'm doing sound design in the background. that we can actually work with and so if we combine all those tricks together to where now maybe we're changing the playhead of this and changing the division percentage well all this stuff that we're getting all the actual sounds that are coming out of this we're just using for rolling sampler right and then if you're using something a little bit different even per se like this other preset that I have which is a more musical one that's combining fifths and octaves together with the generative music, maybe like Elysium. Check out what this is going to do. Also set this to change up into you know different divisions as well but through this I think that it kind of paints the picture as to why this thing is like one of the craziest devices that I've ever purchased especially for when it comes into MIDI and stuff and you know if you want to play keys or you want to bang out drums like you know I'm all for it but I really love the intuition that draws me towards understanding this device and um, it's really freaking fun to 
get something up and going extremely fast. I almost never have a hard time, except for today's stream earlier, but I almost never have a hard time getting a cool idea to which to fire into Bitwig or my iPhone or my iPad, or you can even hook this up to the Syntax or you know anything else of the sort that you need to get MIDI out of. Um, the devs at Oxy1 or at Oxy Instruments really outdid themselves with this product. It feels weighty. It's all aluminum and really high quality rubber and stuff. It comes with an awesome carrying case. I'm not trying to sell you on this product. I have zero affiliation with these people. I have zero, you know, incentive to get you to purchase something other than saying, hey, this tool has really helped me out. And I wanted to explain like what features about this have inspired me to continue writing the music that I do. So do you need this? Absolutely not. I talked about this in the first place. Um, you can get a virtual VST style sequencer. I think there's like Stochast, Stochast or something like that. It's basically stochastic. Um, there's that. There's also some Euclidean stuff. And if you have Ableton or Bitwig, there's a ton of MIDI devices that you can use in which to generate stuff. But I find that the tactile approach and the way that I like working with this particular workflow approach, um, I don't really feel limited. I feel like the stuff that I have, the options that I can explore with are way more than enough for what I need. And um, because of that, like, man, it's just sick. I love this thing. I've got a bunch of projects. You can upload them to your computer or you can, you know, swap out projects because this can only have 15 on file. But, you know, if you fill this out, then you can unload them. And if you need to pull them back, then you can reload them. It's super cool. Uh, with that being said, I hope that you all learned something and uh, had a lot of fun with me today just exploring you know, how this thing works and also some of the capabilities behind what it can do. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, the Oxy Instruments also has a really awesome Discord full of really kind people. Um, I ask them questions in there sometimes. But aside from that, like, man, this one's a banger. It is expensive, but like, it's definitely going to last me a long time and i love that i can apply this immediately to any kind of uh, electronic music medium that i have and the versatility behind that alone is definitely a keeper um shit man it runs on battery <laughs> you know like not a whole lot of hardware devices do that but yeah if you all have any questions hit me up thank you so much for watching and let me know what you all want to see or if you have any more questions regarding content to cover for the oxy one thanks everybody i'll see you in the next one